All right, well, the live look at North American market shows some stocks under pressure in North America. Notable sell-off in Toronto. The S&P and NASDAQ also down today. We did see the NASDAQ get up to record territory this week, but what's the appetite for tech stocks going forward, especially if we've had a big run and there's this constant question around how long interest rates stay at elevated levels in the U.S.? Let's get some insight and analysis now from Kim Forrest, founder and chief investment officer at Boca Capital Partners. Kim, great to have you with us. It seems like the, the broader theme here is stocks had a big run. Once again, we're talking about the outlook for interest rates, maybe higher for longer, something we have to get ready to live with, at least in the United States. Is that your assessment of what's happening in the market today? It is. Um, last year, we could tell if a, the market was going to have a good day or not based on what direction the 10-year Treasury was going. And that's kind of slopped over to this year as well. And today, we see a stronger um, move upward in interest rates on the 10-year, and we have a sad stock market here. So I would say that linkage is back. And as you were pointing out, tech has been the driving factor, and tech stocks sort of depend on lower interest rates because, you know, it's a, a build out of, of that's happening. So capital has to be put to use. And a lot of that capital is borrowed. And it's just easier to work in a low interest rate environment. Now, with that said, how do you feel about investing, broadly speaking, in the stock market going forward? Well, it depends on your timeline. I think any stock is overvalued in the next 15 minutes because we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I am being glib on that, but you, you really do have to have a longer timeline line even than a year, and especially on uh, tech names that are going to have to have probably the next decade to really grow into their valuation and into their promise of delivering the productivity that people are investing in the idea for. So I, I think a longer timeline has to serve you best as an investor. And when it comes to tech itself, which is a sector that you specialize in, what, uh, what stands out to you? Like if you were gonna put some fresh money to work in the market right now, where would you think about putting that? Sure. Well, like everybody else in the world, you know, I'm well aware of AI, having been a software engineer, actually in AI. It was like this dark, weird corner of the world whenever I was doing it. <laughs> but <laughs> here it is, is the hot topic. Um, regardless, AI is investable, but maybe NVIDIA isn't the best place for new money. What we're thinking is, I know that AI takes a lot of data, and that data has to live somewhere, and a company like Micron helps um, by creating the devices upon which that data is stored, but also on um, a, a product called DRAM, which is heavily used in data centers. So I think that sort of maybe one degree away from, or you know, one move away from the hot chips might be a good place for longer term bets. Now, by comparison, Intel's been a very interesting play this year because initially, with all the enthusiasm tied to chip stocks, it was rocking and rolling. But the company has been going through a major transition, and the market response to some of the updates on the financial picture has not been kind. So yes. how do you look at a company like Intel, a turnaround story, in the middle of a big trend story that everybody's interested in, but the stock has really lag the rest of the market. Sure. Well, you know, I think I'm um, thank you for bringing it up because Micron has a shorter run to prove its, you know, relevance in AI and Intel has a longer run and it's probably because well two things. The company did let itself go for a better word lack of words here but you know they were not they used to be the top um, producer of high-tech uh, chips and you know they got their lunch eaten um, slowly and then quickly you know as all good um, companies do but um, they are on the way back we believe because uh, the man running it Pat Gelsinger knows who is in the building and what they're capable of and I believe he is a good leader to lead them out of this but really the company is adding to its portfolio of um, 
services by being a provider to actually create the chips. Now, a company like NVIDIA does not make its own chips. Taiwan Semi makes most of its chips. So Intel is not only going to create its own chips, but then sell its fabrication services to others. And I think that really is a longer term problem or opportunity that has created problems in the short run for the company. And that's why you see it trading off is because the company had to say, look, it's going to take a longer time. It's taking more money than we anticipated originally. But, you know, believe us. And I'm a believer in Intel being able to do that. Finally, just a question about the retail investing landscape. A lot of people wondering how much more consumers have in their pocket and which uh, retailers are best poised to get some of that spending money. Urban Outfitters is a brand that uh, you like. Uh, as an investment, how come? Right. Well, yeah, I'm not sitting here in Urban Outfitters clothes, but I do love them as an investment. They have a very niche view on uh, serving a certain customer, and it's um, a well-heeled, kind of bohemian older lady that has a lot of money to spend. And they've been able to delight that customer and keep that customer coming back through good times and bad. And we believe that is their secret sauce, is they know how to create the buzz and to fulfill her desires. And I think looking at a company that has that kind of understanding of their customer and being able to, over a long time, be able to delight and keep that customer is something that can find your way into your portfolio and may make you some money. Kim